Hello, this is Mike Lively, and this is the last and third video of a series on a video button that I've been producing using Flash Catalyst. And what you're going to want to do, of course, is get the uh, resource files, which I put on Google Code, which is code.google.com forward slash p, lv3d forward slash downloads list, and go ahead and download video3d button.zip. And that has all the resource files that you need to uh, accomplish this project. And here they are right here. And uh, we're going to run back to Flash Catalyst real quick and do a little bit of house cleaning. And then we're going to talk about uh, the uh, Flash Builder. Bringing that into Flash Builder, putting a video component, and finishing up the project. Now here's the Flash Builder project right here. You can just import that if you want to play around with it. Or just follow me in this video and complete the uh, application using the uh, Flash Catalyst file. So let's open up Flash Catalyst real quick and just do a little bit of house cleaning. So here's a little bit of house cleaning before we move on. The use of breadcrumbs, layers, saving, and naming. Uh, so let's move on to that. So let's start off with breadcrumbs. Um, one of the cool things about Flash Catalyst is that as you click on these different components, it actually creates breadcrumbs. So it's very easy to navigate from component to component. So if you get somewhere in the program and you've been working with a particular component, just click back on the different breadcrumbs to go backwards. Uh, the next thing we want to talk about, of course, is layers. Now, things are laid out exactly as in Photoshop. So if you're building a system of layers over here, you have these three panels which are extremely useful. You have the layers panel, the library panel, and the wireframe panel. We'll look at layers right now. And so say you've built something in Photoshop. That's great because it'll completely reproduce that layer structure. Let me navigate down here to a few uh, panels real quick here. So I'm going to navigate down so we can actually get a nice layer structure. And let's take a look at the actual um, uh, G.I. Joe uh, thumbnail we created. Basically, uh, it works just like Photoshop. You can turn visibility on and off, or you can lock layers. Isn't that cool? Another thing, too, if you see this little uh, G.I. Joe uh, thumbnail that I created right here. There it is right there. Basically, uh, I had to rearrange the text over the, the bo image box. And so I drew this image box using these tools right here. You can see there's a set of tools that you use for drawing. It's simple, uh, but you see there's a lot of potential here. And I needed that text over that box. Now, if I just grab and drag the layer, you can see the text is under the box and it disappears. But if I come along here and drag that back, the text is on the top. So as you create resources and work with resources, you'll be working with the layer panel quite a bit. And like I said, if you brought it in from Photoshop, it reproduced that layer panel exactly. Uh, let's take a look at saving. Uh, what you want to do is when you save uh, a Flash Catalyst um, program, let me go back to the first breadcrumb and say I want to save this. So I just go File, Save As. I want to make sure that you've actually added the FXP extension. So sometimes, I don't know if this is a glitch or not, but sometimes if you save it for the first time and if you don't add that FXP extension, then uh, it won't save correctly. So just make sure you add the extension when you save, at least the first time. And finally, this sh let's talk about the uh, naming convention. Uh, one of the problems with Flash Catalyst, if you just keep creating components, it's got this generic name that it gives it. Now, it's easy to change names. You can just double-click on something, for example, and change this to uh, main program if you want to. But what Flash Catalyst does is as you begin to work with more and more resources, it just begins to spawn more and more names. And so this can be a little bit of a pain. And so one thing you can do is if you didn't name right, uh, then when you go into Flash Builder, you can rename there. So you can do this basically using refactoring. I'm going to show this to you. There is salvation at the end. So if you didn't get your naming right in uh, Flash Catalyst, you can get it right in Flash Builder. So let's go right to Flash Builder, import this, and bring in our video. So I'm in Flash Catalyst right now, and I want to bring in my uh, FXP file. So what I want to do is go to the menu item here in File, and it says Import FXP File right here. Import FXP File right here. And it's just that simple. So File, Import FXP, and bring that in. And I just browse where my Flash Catalyst file is, and I have one on my desktop. Let's go there. And zip down here, and I'll bring that in. I called it Third 2, so let's click and bring that in. And hit Finish. And what it will do is reproduce that exact file in Flash Builder. Isn't that pretty cool? So let's come on down here to the file. And here it is right here. And what you'll see here is I've opened up the assets. There's my thumbnail right there. And so it's reproduced. Here's all my components. It's reproduced all my components. And uh, it's, just, it's, it's just wonderful. And so I'm going to run the project and show you. Here's the main exact same code that you saw in Flash Catalyst right here. Here's my component one. And let's just run that. And it should reproduce exactly what you saw in Flash Catalyst. So let's see if that happens. 
and here it is. Roll over, and you see GI Joe. Click, and it flips, and there's my blank screen where I'm going to put my video. So exact re reproduction, exact file structure. So this is just marvelous. Now, one thing I want to do is put that video component in uh, Custom Component 4. I want to show you renaming right now. If I click on Custom Component 4, and I go to Design, I can see, well, there's my blank screen. That's this component that I built in Flash Catalyst. Now, but I don't want that name. I actually want to call that a video or something like that. So let's just rename it. So I'm going to right click on this right here, go rename, and I'm going to call this video component. Notice I have a little checkbox here called update references. What this is actually going to do is not just rename the component here, it's going through the entire file structure and changing that name. And this is extremely powerful and extremely useful in Flash Catalyst. So let's go back to component one, take a look at that code. And then we'll go to component two. And component two was referencing component four, right? But now you can see that it's referencing my video component. Isn't that pretty cool? And go there, and there's my video component. So it changed this, so it changed the references for me, and this is extremely powerful and very useful. And I just want to show you that uh, refactoring is a wonderful thing. There can be some problems with it though. If you want to move files around each time you try to do that, flash. Builder wants to check that and make sure it's refactored or in the right place, and sometimes you want it and sometimes you don't. So you want to hit that checkbox check whenever you want to change names. So what I want to do is I want a video, and I want a different thumbnail. So I'm going to drag my video and my thumbnail into the Assets Image uh, folder. So just open up those resources that you downloaded from the web. And one of the great things that you can do in Flash uh, Builder is just drag resources from the desktop. So I'm going to drag that thumbnail over. There you go. And then I'm going to drag that video over. Ta-da! And that's it. And now I have my video that will play for me. So let's run that back in here. And just with a very few amount of lines of code, I'm going to actually make this work. So first thing I want to do is just change this thumbnail image right here. So let's find that component. I'm going to click here and see if I see an image here. It's my third component that has the image in it. And you can see it's a bitmap image. And it says thumb. I don't want thumb there. I actually want to go G.I. Joe pick. So let's type that in. G.I. Joe pick. And that changes it. And I, I'm going to change this name to as well. So I know this is my image component. So I'll rename this. And it updates the references for me automatically. Isn't that great? So I'm ready to run the program again. Let's see if that change was made. And there's my new image. And everything's working in the glow and all that stuff. So it's that easy to work with components. Let's bring my video in right now. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do that quick. Let's click there. Go. There's many ways to do this. I'm just going to go to design mode real quick here. Let's go to Windows and bring up the, the component set that's in Flash uh, Builder. And they have this wonderful skin spark video. So if you are familiar with Flex Builder, you actually had to build all your video components here. This particular skin has the video components in there for you. So what I'm going to do now is just drag my video component right onto the screen. There you go. And just put it right on top of that. And now I have video component in there. Let's go ahead and just do a little bit to the source. I'll just type, type the source in there. And if you recall, that source uh, file, let's just click so we can get the thumbnail. And you can see there it is right there. Click on that. And what was the source of that video is basically assets, images, and gijoe.flv. And let's do an autoplay on that. And we'll set autoplay to true. And uh, there we go. All the code's done. Let's run the program. So roll over and click. And there's your video playing. Isn't that wonderful? It was that easy. So I'm going to skip over to the finished code and just show you a few more things you want to do to get this working. One thing is I wanted to get rid of the play controls just for this demo. So I changed the video S element, the spark element from video to video element. And that allows me to just basically remove the controls and just work with the basic video element. I still kept my, I changed my autoplay to FOSS but kept my uh, source code in here. And I came up here and added a little bit of control logic. It put some methods in here. So here's two methods that I added. Basically was a play and stop method. And so I want to access those methods when I go to state one and state two of my Flash uh, Catalyst program. So let's take a look at that real quick. So I'm in component two, which, which has my hover over and hover up uh, control logic in it. 
And I have a basic a transition in this, which takes me from state one to state two. You can see that right there. And then I have a state two to state one. Now when I go from state one to state two, I want to turn that video on and off. So I want to turn it on. So what do I do? Basically, I just access that play method. That's all you do is I say one well, component four dot hit the play my video. And I want to stop that video when I go from state two to state one back to the thumbnail. So all I do is in this component is on the end effect basically after I've transitioned to state two I want to run that stop my video method. So essentially with one, two, three, four lines of code I've created this entire component. Let's run it one more time and take a look at it. You can see you flip back over and it stops. Go back over and it starts. There's a lot you can do with the control logic here, but this is the basics.